Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for the ninth week of WeeklyPokerHand.com where today I'm going to be going over one of my hands. This is from a $55 buy-in multi-table tournament I played online. I will go ahead and get right to the action. We are playing 25500 and I have 33,000 chips. We'll see the villain in this hand actually only has 15,000, so we're going to be playing 30 effective big blinds deep. There are antis in play, so there's 540 in the pot from antis, and then 25500 big blinds. And when that's the case, I'm going to be opening a decent amount of hands, just because stealing is so beneficial, and a lot of players don't really adjust properly to account for the fact that there is much, a lot more money in preflop. You know, if you sit there and just play tight and win like 8% of your hands, like a lot of players try to do, you'll find that you do get blinded down. So, even under the gun, I am going to be opening a decent amount of hands like suited connectors, um, big pairs, medium pairs. I'll probably even open small pairs here. But, um, I'm not going to be playing like a knit, for sure. So, we open up with jacks, and this is obviously sort of near the top of our range. However, if uh, one of these other players, well, I was actually looking around the table, let's say if someone else with the same stack as ours three bets us, it's a pretty tricky spot. But as you look around the table, we're actually the chip leader with our 60 big blind stack. Everybody else has about 30 big blinds or less besides the player in the small blind, who is not going to matter in this hand. So we open to 2.5 big blinds, and the big blind calls. So now there is 3,200 in the pot, and the flop comes 8 of clubs, 3 of spades, 2 of clubs, and we have the jack of clubs. Our opponent checks to us, and I think this is a very standard spot to make a continuation bet. Um, you know, our opponent can't really have anything that's too great here, but at the same time, we have jacks, and we don't really want to let a free turn card come off and have something like a ace or a king, or worst of all, a queen beat us, because it's really tough to see a queen coming. It's a lot easier to see an ace or a king coming. So, uh, our opponent checks, and we bet 1,800, which is right around half pot, and I think this is pretty standard. Notice that if I bet half pot here on the flop, and my opponent calls, he'll have 12,000 left. I can then bet like 3,500 on the turn, and then shove the river, and that can easily get his whole stack in. Something you need to always be thinking about whenever you're playing poker is how can I get my opponent's whole stack in? and Or even just how can I make my opponent think he's going to have to put his whole stack in? And, and you really want to figure out ways to rope your opponent in whenever you don't want them off the hook, and then also force them out whenever you do want to get them out of the hand. So always think about your bet sizing and think about what you're trying to accomplish in a hand. And right here, I don't really want my opponent to fold. You know, a lot of players... Uh, particularly amateur players, get something like pocket jacks and think, okay, I'm just going to raise big and force everyone out so that I win the pot. But you have to realize, all you're doing if you do that is you're bluffing, because you're making everyone fold. And if they, your opponents have a better hand than jacks, they're not folding. They're not going to just like fold ace-king or pocket queens pre-flop. It's just not going to happen. So, whenever you raise large with jacks and then um, force everyone out of the hand, you may think you're avoiding a suck out or whatever, but you have to realize that Jacks, like, aren't the nuts, you know? They're, they're a good hand, but they're certainly not super premium by any means. Uh, but they're still a very good hand, especially when the board comes 8-3-2. We're not too concerned with my opponent outdrawing me. So he does call, and the turn is a 4 spades, which is pretty much a blank. I, I don't really think he ever has 6-5 here. He could have pocket 4s, but that's really it. And anytime there's only just a few combinations of hands that get added to the hand, the range of hands your opponent has that can beat you, that's usually a good thing. And right here, the only hands that get added are pocket fours, and that's like non that's completely insignificant. Um, like whereas if say the turn was like a nine, we now lose pocket nines, we lose to nine eight. Or even like the nine of clubs. Nine of clubs would be like the worst card. Or obviously I guess the ace of clubs would be pretty bad too. Anyways, on the turn I bet thirty six hundred, which is about half pot again. Again, notice if my opponent calls, he'll have about nine thousand left, the pot will be thirteen thousand. And I can easily shove 9,000 to 13 on the river if I get a good river. And then to my surprise, he check shoves. And now, I don't think he's going to show up with something like ace-3 too often, unless he has like ace-3 with the ace of clubs. So I think his bluffing hands here are going to be like squarely flush draws. But even then, I think that he may have just check-raised the flop with those. So I'm, I'm going to sort of discount flush draws from his range. Not all together, but somewhat. He could have something like ace-2 of spades or ace-8 of spades that he decided to play this way. The real thing you need to figure out in this spot is what hands 
is your opponent value betting? Like, what hands is, is he shoving with that he thinks are good that I will call with worse? So, like, is he pushing ace eight here thinking I'll call with a worse hand? And I think the answer is probably not. So, well, one one thing that is worth mentioning is that he may be pushing ace eight here thinking uh, he doesn't want to get outdrawn, which is not necessarily a bad idea because if I have something like king queen, and you know, I, I have plenty of outs if I'm just betting here. So I don't hate a check shove in that case, but it's a pretty gross spot, and obviously should have just folded ace eight preflop to start with. Now something else you can also go back to is the preflop calling hands. Obviously this is only a fifty-five dollar tournament, so I can't really narrow my opponent's range to specifically preflop. But this is a pretty dicey spot because if you think about it, there's not a whole lot my opponent can have in this situation besides some sort of funny draw, like maybe ace six with the ace of club or the ace of, or ace six with ace six of club, something like that. I mean, I really don't know what my opponent's representing here. I'm gonna say that he's gonna show up with something like. Ace eight, maybe nine eight, or maybe somehow something like Queen Jack of Spades. Uh, but I, I honestly don't know what he's going to show up with here. So the thing is, is that I really don't know if there are very many value hands he can have besides exactly the sets. And I, so I think if he doesn't have a set, I think I have the best hand virtually every time. And whenever there are just so few combinations of sets your opponent can have, you should really just look them up. And right here, as you see, we do need to win 28% of the time to break even, and against a range that's full of like random top pair hands, sets, and flush draws, we're going to be in pretty great shape. So I do like to call, and he does happen to have one of those hands, the 8-6 of spades. And this is actually a fantastic turn card for him, because it gives him the gut shot. The 5 would give him the straight. So I have to dodge any spade, any 8, any 6, and any 5. And so that's a heck of a lot of cards to dodge. And honestly, it doesn't even matter what happens here, because we do get it in, and we're in fine shape. But, just to show you guys what happens, we do win. And we win a pretty nice pot. So, it's a pretty cool hand. I think my opponent should have almost certainly played his hand differently, and I will be discussing that in part two of the series, where I take a look at this hand from my opponent's perspective. But, this is a spot where you need to be very careful with your top pair, because it's very easy to overvalue it. And at the same time, it's very easy to undervalue it. Um, whenever you get check raised on the turn, it's always a gross spot in No Limit Hold'em, so just try to think about your opponent's range, see what makes sense, and go from there. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.